Hello. Well, Justin, it's been a minute since we've seen you. I think the last time we spoke to you was on the red carpet for the UFC Hall of Fame. So how's life been uh, without a fight books for you so far? You know, there's a, it's really fast and then really slow. I, I really enjoy both parts of uh, this game. I got my nose fixed about five weeks ago. So, uh, you know, anticipating my food is something I've been really enjoying. Well, given that you, I'm sure you haven't been in camp or anything or training, given you had uh, you fixed your nose, have you had time to let the rest of your body heal up too from just constantly being in camp over the last few years? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think, um, you know, my last fight, you know, Charles was uh, brilliant, you know, and he hurt me often. He hurt me early. Ten seconds in, I was, uh, you know, really hurt and probably – Four times after that, I uh, felt something I've never felt in a cage. So, you know, it was uh, just one of those fights where, you know, it was against adversity the whole time. I was gonna ask. I was gonna ask about that. I think after the fight, the cameras picked you up, saying like you hit really hard when you guys were both leaving the octagon. So, re w did that catch you yeah. off guard that how powerful and crisp his striking was? Yeah, I mean, it's a feeling. You know, it was a feeling I've never felt. You know, usually you get hit. You call it a buzz. Um, call it a flash. This is more like my tongue just went on a super powerful battery. And it just, my entire body, it was crazy. So, uh, yeah, it was perfect shots, you know, perfect time, one or the other. And, yeah, it was the factors that I, I faced that night. And then since that night, you've had a, a couple lightweights even called you out. Fazeev's called you out. Gamrot's called you out. So what do you make of, like, even though you're not in camp or taking fights, that these lightweights are still calling you out for fights? Yeah, I mean, it cannot be a bad thing, you know, that uh, when people are saying your name, it's free publicity. And, um, you know, I've been away. I didn't talk to you guys after my fight. You know, I got hit hard. Um, you guys get to see the fun part, but you don't get to see the aftermath. And uh, there's a factor. Um, every fight, you know, and this fight particularly, you know, mm -hmm. I was not ready to talk to you guys. Um, not because I didn't want to, you know, because I wasn't, uh, I wasn't able. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's the name of the game. And then, of course, you have the title fight between Charles and Islam coming up. Uh, Benil Darius fighting Gamrot, and uh, Poirier is supposedly going to fight Chandler later this year. How do you see the rest of the division playing out as by, by the end of the year? Yeah, game? I mean, uh, you know, with the no surgery, if I went away, one thing the fighters have to always understand is this sport will always go on um, as it is. You know, they need you, but they don't need you, and that's the best part about the sport. Um, fighting is so exciting. Chance, skill, anything can happen at any moment, and uh, that's why we're such big fans. So those fights need to play out. You know, I have no idea how they're going to go. I'm 100% confident that Islam will not dominate Charles, and uh, that's about it. What makes you say he, you're sure he won't dominate him? Obviously, that's something we've seen from him so far in his career. Yeah, I don't know how to explain it. That's, uh, that's what I feel. The last time I stepped in, in there with him, you know, I don't. There's no way that uh, it's going to be a great fight. I wish I was there. I wish it wasn't in Abu Dhabi so I could be there. But, uh, yeah, you guys are – we're all in for a treat. Do you think that's just going to be a clash of both of them with the forward pressure? They both like to move forward at, at all costs? Uh, I don't know. I think um, I think Charles is going to move forward. I don't see – you know, Islam's going to try. And eventually he might be successful, and if he is, he'll win. Uh, but I don't see, you know, I don't see him tiring him out. If even if he takes him down for the first two rounds, I don't see Charles being um, getting submitted, and I don't see him being too exhausted to continue to fight the fight that he needs to fight. Um, so it's just what I think. I mean, chance, luck. I think Kamal's going to finish Leon in the fourth round tonight. Why? No idea. <laughs> Justin. Um, it, just one. In terms of your own call outs, what do you make of Fazeev and is that a fight that interests you? Yeah, I mean, too, this, this, again, the sport moves on. These guys are, are gro growing, you know, exciting fighter. Um, the way you win, you have to win, but how you win is the most important. So, um, you know, again, really fast and then really slow. When it's really slow, I enjoy it. You know, I play, play golf, um, rest my body, rest my mind. You know, uh, these guys are, when I was their age, it was 24-7, 365. Um, and, you know, that's not a bad route whenever your body can hold up. Now, 
you know, 33. And, you know, just got to take care of my body in between fights. And, the, you know, the thing I was getting at, we have the advantage of the other dangerous sports, boxing, football. You know, we get time in between. And uh, we go when we say go, and we don't go when we don't say go. So I wanted to take this break. I think this uh, was a perfect opportunity to get the nose fixed. It's been 13 years. I had about four amateur fights with, uh, with the nose. Um, so, yeah, anticipating my food is something special. Justin, you, you're a great fighter. So, and are you willing to take in a short turn, like a revenge against Oliveira? If that happened, what you can do better in the next fight? Yeah, um, it's hard to talk about because it was, it was a crazy night. You know, it's an instant in time. Uh, there's things I would like to change, but it'll all sound like an excuse. You know, I have to take, take it with me. I have to internalize it, and I have to make sure that I never make – the mistakes that I feel like I, ma I made. Thank you so much. Justin. I'm just curious, yesterday at the uh, weigh-ins, you were bombarded by a ton of Salt Lake City fans. I'm just curious what your thoughts were about being here in Salt Lake City and how you've enjoyed it. Yeah, this, this sport is crazy. I mean, humans recognize effort. I've said that since day one. Um, I give max effort. You pay a ticket price to come to this arena and feel a feeling, you know, get endorphins, adrenaline. These are things that you've never, you don't feel on a regular basis. And when you feel it, it's something special, especially when you're not in danger. You know, you can enjoy the hell out of it. So, um, you know, I give every single person the cost of admission. So, uh, you know, they love me. I love them. This is, uh, you know, I've seen, I've seen fighters and I have no, you know, I don't mean to knock them, but, you know, taking pictures, signing autographs. As a child, that was my dream. Um, you know, I was out there for, Three and a half hours today, they had a clicker, first time ever. And I got to work through about 920 people in three and a half hours. So it's a dream come true for me. I come from a small place, you know. We as fighters don't come from opportunity. We don't come from wealth. And we have one dream, and that's to, uh, to inspire the world. That was my dream, and it's cool that I get to do that. Yeah, um, there's a big fight coming up, Michael Chandler versus Dustin Poirier. You've shared the octagon with both of those fighters. I'm curious how you see that fight playing out. It's, it's, it's all a guess. No, I, I'm guessing that it's going to play out a lot like my fight. Um, I think Poirier is going to be methodical. I think Chandler's going to be explosive. I think he's going to be dangerous as hell for, you know, nine minutes. He's still dangerous after that. That's why the risk versus reward factor – um, calculation that's constantly going on never allowed me to take that chance. That man is dangerous, um, and he loves to fight, so I'm a fan. You've been on the same card as Kamaru for the last couple of fights, and so I'm just curious, is it kind of nice to not have to worry about fighting on the same card as one of your teammates? <sighs> I mean, it's, it's harder when your teammates are fighting, so, you know, um, it, when he starts to make that walk right now, I'm trying to control it, but, you know, not think about it, because I have zero control, and, you know, when when you see someone that you care about that much go in there and there's a the factor of luck and chance, you know, and they could come into play, it's nerve wracking. Um, so I'm, I'm just, you know, hoping the best for him. He's the best in the world. He works, uh, he works so unbelievably hard. You guys would not believe it. Um, when the camera's on, when the camera's off, an hour before the workout, an hour after the workout, you know, it's, it's absolutely insane. Hey, Justin. If Kamaru gets the victory tonight, curious, where do you place him all time amongst the MMA greats? Oh, I'll never talk about this conversation without breaking it down into eras. Um, the current era, for sure the go. I mean, statistically, um, especially with the fact that he's been getting finishes. I mean, we want to see, I want to see as a fan, I want to see you finish somebody. Um, and boy, has he been finishing people. So it's fun, man. I mean, he put, he put Kobe down twice. Maybe he didn't finish him, but the man uh, is confident in his striking, and he's dangerous. Just, just when you, you brought up your nose, what's the biggest differences that you've noticed right now? And when you talk about the anticipation for the yeah. food, is that just the, being able to smell it properly, or, or is it going to affect I mean, the way that it tastes? As well? I, w I would say pronunciation of the English language, but <laughs> I've had like three drinks, so it seems like that's probably also <laughs> not doing good right now. So. Uh, I'm excited to get out there, see these fights. Um, again, sleeping, eating, living, quality of life, um, biggest factors for sure. I haven't even, I've done workouts, you know, I haven't sparred, uh, but I'm excited to spar and wrestle, you know, with a broke, with a, with a fixed nose.
And definitely, we understand why you why you waited so long to do it. Is it, but now that you're starting to feel anything, do you wish you ever maybe did a little bit sooner? Yeah, you know, I was really hoping and counting that someone would break it. You know, I thought it would be Tony Ferguson, and I just ended up having to break it myself. And yeah, again, I got hit hard last fight. Boxing, football, more dangerous. Not as violent as what we do, but more dangerous because we get to rest. Uh, the human body is resilient. You have to give it time. Um, is there too much? Maybe. You know, we've only been around since 1992, so we don't know yet. Enjoy the fights. Sir.